Exactly, because at, at the end of the day, we want you to grow with us. For, yeah, and we want to grow with you. Yeah, it's a two way street. Yeah, yeah. you feel me? So and we gotta know if you're doing any any crazy stuff out here. We gotta know oh, who we're bringing on board. One hundred percent. Because if I'm out here on some crazy stuff, you gotta be like, nah, dude. You can, <laughs> that's not an option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, right. come on, bro. You we trip. love you, but that's not good for but the you brand. tripping. <laughs> well, you messing up the money right now, bro. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you know what? That's what we need in our community, though, man. We need to be able to say that to each other. Yeah. Uh, what, what we call that? Um. You gotta be able to have uh, transparency. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, transparency and call you out like, yo, Dill, you you messing up. Bro. Hey, don't worry. Yo, you messing up, bro. Don't worry, we got some of the works. Jabril's been on it. We okay. have like a young Muslim committee, almost like a culture. He keeps talking about it, which I never yeah. understood. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Still, now, I'm still trying to like make sense of it, man. Yes. But now yeah. I get it. It's okay. more like, yo, you can't be doing that. You yeah. know, it's not. Yeah. It's we're not, not canceling nobody because yeah. right. right. canceling doesn't make sense because everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. You can bounce back. More, it's more like. We're not rocking like that. Yeah. You feel me? You but represent all of us. Though. That's mm. from the sun, though. Like the, mm -hmm. you know, the Sahabas. Yo, an interesting story, right? I'm not. Are we, are we, are we? No, we're recording. Yeah. We're going. Yeah. Just, just go ahead. We'll get we'll, we'll open story up. That, the story um, that uh, that I really love. Mm -hmm. uh, when um, Omar sent Sa Saad ibn Abi Waqqas to conquer a specific, specific land, I believe it was in Persia. Mm -hmm. When he went to go conquer the land, the people started building a palace for for Saad, mm -hmm. and then. Um, when Umar got word of it, he sent a messenger to Saad. He said, cut it out. Mm. Like, this is not yeah. what we started this for. Mm -hmm. And he, he commanded Saad to destroy it. But Saad, he's a, he's a powerful general, commander. He, he, he took the Persians. Yeah. He was like, he shut it down because his brother was able to check him inside his own space. And these people, these are people who conquered large swaths of land yeah. and, 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 and led the Muslims on a major, um, a major, um, you know, development in in the Muslim the Muslim world. So, getting checked is that's what that's what you're supposed to be getting. That's what you're exactly. supposed to be getting. You're supposed to be getting, and, supposed and, to get and, checked. And the the reminder of being fits the believer. Well, certainly, you know what I'm saying. So, well, so certainly. we have to remind one another. Yeah. Because if I'm tripping, you know, I want yeah. you to come and check yeah. me too. You feel me? Yeah. So, so that's what it's all about. Yeah. And and. and as this idea and as this concept has been developing, it isn't, you know how people, oh, this is an initiative or a movement. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I personally, I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. But it's, it's more than that. It's, I got to move. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we're starting a movement. It's like, nah, it's, nah. You, you go on yeah, saying, though, it's, saying. It's, it's, it's nothing corny. It's something that's real, that's tangible, yeah. that, that yeah. we're all involved in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, bro, for nothing, we're in a time right now where we're seeing more Muslims out in the limelight than mm. we've ever had. Mm. And, and I was saying the last hundred years, maybe. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Where it's yeah. like everybody has a platform. Yeah. So there has to be some sort of culture that surrounds what it means to be young and Muslim. Right. Most not, just, not just, it, it is what it is. Everybody's free willy. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? At least yeah. for maybe a specific subculture where mm -hmm. we come in in, uh, in our part, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what we're looking at, bro. Yeah. And we got to be to feel comfortable with, with, with each come to each other and, 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 Income and giving our upliftment and mm -hmm. and not thinking looking at it as a as a negative criticism, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. you you coming to me is love. Absolutely, you know? exactly, like, that's, exactly. Like you care about me. If you are able to come to me and and enlighten me, like yo, you you, you slacking, like lift up. Yo, so I, I'm, I'm behind that. I'm behind that that culture. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I ain't gonna call it a movement. But nice. I'm behind We're behind that culture. the culture. It's the culture. It's, the culture. it's bigger than a yeah. movement. A movement lasts yeah. until it stops. Yeah, most certainly. Hey, we see. I like speaking that. Big facts. Yeah, you're right. big facts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great. It's a great right. responsibility. Don't let, my head, don't let me get my head big on this. Yeah, but it is a great responsibility, and you know, whether it's rappers, artists, or even football players they all have media relation yeah re representatives or teams so before they go out and make a co press conference or go online they're told what to say what not to right, say right now as the muslim youth specifically we all have large platform whether mm -hmm. it's tiktok instagram facebook snapchat like people have become to know who muslims are but there is no media relations team so people right. are posting whatever yeah. so we're not yeah. Uh, yeah you know so whether it's right whether it's wrong yeah. We don't know, just getting posted. Yeah, so that's true. There's no, there's but no you know, we good. gotta, um, we gotta definitely lean, build that team. Absolutely. Because as I'm, as I'm building this, you know, this movement or this, mm -hmm. the the development of this book, I'm realizing how much of a team I need. Absolutely. You know, like as you mm -hmm. said, I, I, like I'm, call, I'm, I'm creating this, 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 this movement and the wording behind this movement, and I'm like, yo, I need somebody to, 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 to cross reference what I'm saying and making sure that. It's smooth enough. It, it it says the the right things. It's mm -hmm. it's not offensive. You know, some things need to be said, 
Uh, but what are some of those things that don't need to be said? Yeah. So I agree with you 100%. We, but it's from the Sunnah, it's from Islam to have that that um, that uh, team to be a part of you. It's it's amazing because um, I keep we've been talking about sort of Taha all day. I keep talking. No, about we Surah haven't talked about this. But um, I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. But before you get into that, because yeah, I yeah. want to hear this, <laughs> yes. we do have to start. We do need to kick okay, this go off. Ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Our people would be like, "Yo, you guys never started. Y'all just go." Like, <laughs> Yo, so we want to respect the listener yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, we we love it. you guys. Right. We love you guys. Some people might know that voice, but for those that do not, you're about to find out who we have on the third mic today. But before Ooh. we do. Let's go, baby. Three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? This is Jabril Salam. And Muhammad Hassan. And you are listening to the Young and Muslim Podcast. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Black Mer, 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 Mer. History Mer. Hey, you oh, can't. Oh, Speedy hey. Gonzalez, I got that energy Let's today, get it, baby. Sir. Let's get it. Let's get it. So today we have a very, very special guest, brother Adil. Yes, Ismail, mashallah. Author, father, entrepreneur. Philanthropist, I saw that in there, so I had to do as much as I can. <laughs> do as much as you can, alhamdulillah. So, Humble yeah. Brat. <laughs> so, who is a deal, Ismail? I'm just a young Muslim. Hey, you on the right <laughs> show? You on the right podcast? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just young and Muslim out here, man. But you know, even more, I'm I'm young, I'm Muslim, and I'm discovering what it means even even more to be Muslim, young and Muslim in America. Hey, my yeah. name is Ayad Ismail. I'm the author of my Kufi and also Breaking Borders. Um, I'm a traveler, as you guys said. You guys mentioned a number of things that I do. I don't think I need to repeat that too no, much. No, yeah. uh, but I'm pretty much just on a journey to inspire people um, to be their greatest selves, whatever that means, whether it's through travel or your identity. And uh, one thing I'm realizing that you learn your identity through travel and how much that, you know, travel influences your identity and understanding who you are as a person, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm just travel is one of my platforms and my Kufi has become another one of my platforms and I'm grateful to be on that journey. I'm the man. man. Hey, I know that yeah. three ways to really get to know somebody yeah. is one, doing business with them. Yes, sir. Two, living with them. Yes, sir. And I ain't gonna live with you. <laughs> so third, <laughs> is to travel with them. Yes, sir. You know, so inshallah we'll get the chance to travel with you. But uh, you know, we before we get into your book, My Kufi and yeah. uh, your second book, um, let's talk about more about you. When well, when was the first time you actually traveled, and what made you tr- what made you want to travel? All right, so the first time I actually traveled was yeah. uh, coming from Saudi to America for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born in Saudi Arabia. Uh, my parents are American, but I was born in Saudi. So my first time traveling, <laughs> excuse me, my mm-hmm. first time traveling is coming from Saudi to America. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, um, and then after that, I hadn't traveled for maybe another. 21 years or something like that. No, I'm, 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 I'm cap. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm cap. <laughs> for, for, for all you non-Americans or people all on the East Coast. <laughs> he's he's no, welling. He's welling. He over here welling. The next, welling time, the next time I traveled was probably like, at, was around like 22, 23. Okay. okay. So five years later, I traveled for the first time in, independent of my family. Um, so I went on my own solo trip. And, Where was that trip to? Um, Actually, I'm lying. I think the first trip was with my wife hmm. to Virginia. I think we went to Canada together. And then Canada's always nice. Yeah, yeah, but that was like that first initial, like first big trip. Like, for like you, like you just yeah, making that establishment. Exactly. Gotcha. And then, and then I went to Mexico. Hmm. Nice. And then I went to, um, I believe from there I went to Dubai. Okay. Yeah, and then like. Uh, Dominican Republic and then a couple of those places, and then, but then my travels went like just took off from there. Got you. Um, it's addicting. Yeah, it, it really is, and I didn't realize what I was getting myself into traveling, mm-hmm. um, but I'm glad I was led on that journey mm-hmm. to travel. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I started through my agency, right? I started traveling because of my agency, my travel agency that I was operating, and I was doing a really good job for my. I was doing a really good job for my clients. Um, but I was like, in order for me to do better, a better job for my clients, I have to know what it's really like to travel. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I went out there and started traveling in my on my own, and I've just got kept getting inspired to travel more and more and more, which led me on my journey to re, uh, to write my first book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before that, it led me on a journey to um, to take young black boy or young boys of color uh, on different trips in the in our immediate area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went on a number of trips, and I believe it was on our last trip that we took, a good friend of mine, Zar, uh, she was like, Dale, you need to write a, um, 
a, 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 a travel guide for mm. black men. Mm. Um, and I was like, a travel guide? What are you talking about? Like, what? Yeah. But as I really thought about it, I was like, you know what? You're right. Then I started exploring. Do black men really travel? And mm. what I found was at that time, black men really didn't travel. How long ago was this? This was probably like, um, it started maybe... This journey started maybe four years ago. Okay. Um, there's been a huge boom in black men traveling now. Yeah. Um, but then it was like, it was something that you didn't see. We weren't going anywhere. Yeah, it wasn't like, we would do trips to Miami, you know, small trips <laughs> to like Vegas, Island. Vegas, we were Cali. Talking about that yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't no real travel, getting out there, seeing the world. But now there's a huge boom of, you know, black men traveling. Um, and it's just, it's amazing to see it. So. Um, so when I, when I was led on that journey, I started to explore why we don't travel. So I started exploring our culture and everything that happened has happened to us in history and everything, all, all those different things. And I compiled it and I created Brick and Borders yeah. with the concept of helping our young black men <clears throat> and men of color to uh, um, shift the way they think about their culture, their circumstances, I think go beyond it and break their borders, their mental mm -hmm. borders and the actual physical borders inside of where we live in. So, um, and that's where the whole inspiration behind breaking borders. So then I let, then, and then it went deeper and I started traveling more and, mm. um, and I continue, I'll continue to travel. So, so yeah, man, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man. The first time when, <laughs> when you actually think about travel, something that comes to mind, obviously is funds, yeah. financial, how can we do this? So right. my question to you is that, how were you able to take a group of young underprivileged black boys and allow them to travel how were you able to finance yeah. that uh friends and family I'm and sure even my, out of my own pocket um that's where some of the philanthropy comes in at <laughs> yeah. like said, hey, hey, hey that's the best type man right, right at home you know because i'm like man these young boys need it mm. yeah you know they yeah. need i need to sh help shift the culture some way i need to have some contribution so you said you were born in saudi yeah right and you came here do you feel like because you were born overseas and then you came here that the the things that the afflictions that we have mentally as far as traveling and getting outside of america do you feel like that affliction doesn't really affect you as much as it would say someone that's been born here and really hasn't traveled as much no it does mm -hmm. because although i travel here i still have i'm a black man in america and i still have the same i go through the same exact things that everybody else goes through got you you know i, I still have no funds and i think that was a question I, you know that you mm -hmm. that you mentioned i want to get back to that my brain went, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Um, but I want to get back to that and, 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 and answer that question. Um, um, but it, it's, it affects me as well. Um, but I've, like, I'll give you a story. Um, I came across some money a couple years ago um, before I really started my travel journeys. I wanted to travel, didn't travel because I was afraid to travel. Mm -hmm. And I had all the money to do it. That's, what were you afraid of? I don't know. Huh. Exactly. And that's the whole point. I didn't realize what I was afraid of. Mm. You know, so Man. I had myself, I had to go beyond my own individual fear within myself of all the things that I thought could go wrong. You know, when I look at it now, it was like, what were you afraid of? Nothing. <laughs> but yeah. then yeah. I had these just ideas that uh, maybe it's just not going to work out. Mm -hmm. And I psyched myself out of it, out of yeah. doing it. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, this was a trip to Florida. Wow. wow, a domestic trip. A domestic trip. And I well, I don't know. Florida, Florida isn't really part of America. The way they be at it. <laughs> Unless you go <laughs> South Beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fact. But, um, you know, I, I was afraid. Yeah. And what I find a lot of times is a lot of people are afraid to travel. Or, and they, and they, they mask their fear with other things. Mm. What you do know? you mean, other things? Excuses? Like or? Other excuses, yeah. Okay. Other excuses. Oh, this happens. Another yeah. thing, uh, one thing I really talk about all the time is the fact that people don't have passports. So oh they'll use yes. the idea that they don't have a passport as an yeah. excuse not to travel. They'll Just have the money to book the flight anywhere, but then they'll be like, oh, I mean, I don't have a passport, so it's okay, I, I, I gotta get my passport. Yep. And then they take the time to have to get their passport, so it takes them forever to get their passport, and they still haven't gone on an actual trip. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that, so it, it, I, had to, I had to overcome my own self in gotcha. order to start traveling. And to answer your question, to come back to it, how I was able to fund it was just, just through my own individual work and uh, um, efforts and just understanding how to make it work. Mm. You know, mm. get, knowing how to get the spots, <laughs> you know, yes. knowing how to, knowing the best way to get the transportation going. And, you know, Absolutely. Um, yeah. I don't want to confuse the listeners, but I'm just going, jumping back to the first question, oh, yeah, the last sure. question you asked. No, trust me, our, uh, our yeah. listeners are on, they on it. Yeah, they're they're on smart, smart. Smart. yeah so, <laughs> but uh, that, that's how I was able to do it. And at the, at, you know, honestly, that's how anyone's able to travel. 
you know mm. you know everyone cannot afford to travel like someone can afford to travel with a lot of money True. Yeah. you know absolutely um so instead of just not traveling you have to um, look at travel from a different perspective like you don't have to look at travel from a luxury perspective you don't exactly. have to look at travel from you know instagram and people are showing amazing hotels not mm -hmm. that influencer you're looking at not times and they're they're getting paid to be there or exactly. that hotel been given to them mm -hmm. how many hotels i've gone to Finesse. you know I've, i haven't paid for it because i'm a travel agent and i have a i have a i have a brand that people follow so yeah when it comes down to it don't be psyched out by people in amazing hotels you know because nine times out of ten they are that the hotel was given to them so that that hotel brand can boost their branding and a whole nine um so if if you travel i saw a post about it i don't agree with it uh the hotel they said the hotel does matter <laughs> mm. you know i don't believe the hotel matters it matters mm. but it doesn't matter like you don't want to be in a a, a crap hole yeah, exactly you, know? you don't want you don't want to be inside a place where roaches is running around <laughs> yeah you don't want to yeah, be inside yeah. of a place where it's just disgusting and uncomfortable unsafe you know you want to be inside of somewhere that's comfortable but you don't have to be inside of something that has you know all the bells and whistles yeah. and it doesn't have to be five hundred dollars a night for mm -hmm. it to qualify for a good experience yeah you know so you can create a good experience with the minimum and i think know? that's why you had those travel tips on your instagram yeah that yeah. was really really good because yeah. i looked yeah. at them i was like oh wow yeah such as if you travel and you don't have you can take your credit card yeah and when you come back you get paid because yeah. it, it is yeah. it is a mind mindset shift because you know, for all those people listening, when you get money for Eid or people that aren't Muslim Christmas money, you know, mm -hmm. take those two, three hundred dollars instead of buying a system or some shoes. You can legitimately go round trip yeah. to Florida, to yeah. California. That's how affordable it is. Yeah. It really is. You feel me? And just know when to fly. Oh, yeah. You know, you point. don't have to fly during the top seat or the season where everybody else is traveling. Mm, you know, if you want to go to West Africa in, in December, you go and pay. Twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars for a flight. Yep. But if you want to go West Africa, whenever when all the West Africans are not going to that West Africa, you nine times a day you're gonna pay seven hundred dollars for your flight. Yeah. It's just that simple. And everywhere yeah. else, if if you want to go to the Middle East during Eid in Ramadan, guess what? You gonna pay some bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I made that mistake. I got stuck in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> it was Eid. I got stuck in. I got stuck in Egypt. I mean, in Egypt mm -hmm. or Eid, and I was like, what am I going to do? Flights were like. Twelve hundred. I couldn't afford that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, um, and I, and I'm so grateful that I had a brother um, uh, over there, um, the good brother. I really, really do appreciate him because yeah. he let me, he Shout let me uh, shack up in his house, Marshall, and wow. um, he and he let me stay as long as I needed to stay. Wow. I was there for like a week and a half. Are you wow. serious? Oh, that's Made sure I was up. good every day, fed me everything. So me a lot. I would, I would have found a wife and yeah. just squatted yeah. up in the squad. <laughs> like, Shout I out to like, I live here now. Like. I told you my people was great. I told you. <laughs> that was, um, but he's, he's he was an African American brother, but he's over he was over there studying. Oh, oh okay, so word, 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 reward word. him Amen. and bless him, you know, immensely for all the good that he does. Uh, I mean, so but we had an amazing time over there. I, it, it, it allowed it allowed me to actually accomplish a goal of mine. What was that? And I didn't realize it. So when it happened, I was kind of like distraught by missing my flight, my flight being canceled. Mm. I was distraught by it, but then. Um, a few days later, I remembered that I had a goal like a year and a half earlier mm -hmm. uh, to do Eid inside of a Muslim country. Yo, oh, that's nuts. Hey. You know? <laughs> so two days later, I'm in Eid inside of like, um, what is it? Um, it's Sukhid Hussein. Mesh Hussein. Yep. So I'm in Mesh Hussein, mm -hmm. Eid, and I'm like, yo, I'm in Egypt, Eid, and all the Muslims are out there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, mashallah, this is so, so my, so my problem turned into a good thing because yeah. my goal got accomplished and I got to experience Eid one more time in the Middle East with the Muslims in a wow. way that I haven't experienced in a very long time yeah. since I was in Saudi Arabia. So it was really, it was, so it turned out really good, but you know. Mm -hmm. hey. So what is, what is, um, you know, when you first started traveling, what were, what was one of the first lessons that you learned when you took, you know, one of your first two or three trips? What was one of the bigger lessons, whether that was, you know, travel related or whether it was something intrinsic? The world is bigger than we think. And also, um, we're loved outside of the U.S. Who's we? Yeah. Black people. Okay. That, right, yeah. Explain. explain. I'm, spe I'm speaking from a black perspective. Okay. okay. So excuse okay. me. You know. I mean, you, you know. I, I, I wouldn't yeah. assume you can speak any other perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excuse me, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking from the black perspective, and um, I didn't realize how many people admired us abroad. Yeah. Mm. Especially other black people. 
they see us in all the struggles that we went through here in America for the last 400 years, and they're just amazed by it. So wow. I, in my encounters, being in different countries mm -hmm. and having different brothers come up to us and just say, yo, man, like, yo, we admire y'all. Like, y'all lit. Like, you know, keep doing what y'all do and just showing us all kinds of love just off the fact that we were African-American. I was like, dang, I didn't realize y'all loved us As a Muslim else. or just African-American? It was as African-American. Okay. As an okay. African-American because, okay. um, you know, they had never, they had maybe had not really interacted with an African-American before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this is before, like, my whole push for the identity, you know, in Islam. So, and this is, this is me on my journey to learning my identity within Islam. So, you know, I'm, I'm navigating in, I'm navigating as an African-American. Yes. You know, as an American, black American, and, they, and that's what they see. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they're, they're identifying me as, and they're giving me, you know, props and kudos for, for, for who I am and my own struggles. And they're literally expressing these things. I got like a few conversations in my head right now where, <laughs> you know, with these different guys who are letting us know that they are, they are in touch with our culture and everything that's happened with us. Things yeah. that we don't, we're not even in, in touch with. I was amazed. I was like, wow. Yeah. So when I experienced that, I was like, oh, so they do pay, pay attention to us. Wow. They do pay attention. So other people are paying attention to us that, that we didn't, um, whereas when you come to America, we're you know we're allies just for you know our hip hop and things like that, but mm -hmm. we know we're not really showing you love for being who we are, mm -hmm. you know. So, so yeah. So you mentioned so. you mentioned those are the things that you learned, right? The, yeah. the world's bigger and we're admired more than we think, right? Yeah. But what were the changes that happened to you once you started traveling? Like, how did you? I like, became grow? more fearless. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, 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 no. You you had the answer lined up. Yeah, ahead, cut them off. <laughs> no, I just became more fearless. Mm. I became more fearless in my approach. And I realized that I can I can accomplish more than I could ever I ever imagined before I started traveling. And I'm grateful that um, I went to Dubai. Dubai was one of my face my first major uh, countries that I traveled to, um, and it's a great inspiration in Dubai. Um, in the United Arab Emirates, the United Arab Emirates was created within like 25 years. Everything that is now, mm -hmm. but you know, 25 years ago it was like like 25 or 30 years ago it was like dust. Or I think I'm lying. It's 45. Mm -hmm. I believe 45 it was founded 45 years ago. But you know, 25 years ago, it was majorly desert as well. Mm -hmm. And um, but um, the the person who founded Dubai or the um, United Arab Emirates, um, it was said that he only like read two books in his own entire life. <laughs> that was a businessman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he only read two books in his own entire life, and they had put the plan of action to create the country in place before um, the British helped them discover oil. Oh. So they had already had a vision to become a nation before they knew they had oil. They had the money. Wow. So mm. they, <laughs> they, they, they put forth their plan to unify and become a nation, and then they found the money. And that inspired me. <laughs> and I was like, shoot, wow. So there's people, they don't got no money. They create this vision. They come together. They make it happen. They, come, they create something greater than they ever created, and then the money came to them. Man. And I was like, what lesson can I learn from that? And mm -hmm. I learned that, you know, you can create more than you can ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Just put your, your plan forth and everything's going to come. It's going to come to you as it's supposed to come to you. So, hey, man, I, I love that oh, because yeah, I like that, I like that, that right there in itself is breaking borders. Yeah, you feel me? Because exactly. That's just mentally like, hey, look, don't worry about excuse. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. Like they tell entrepreneurs, what entrepreneurs do, they say yes and they'll find a way to do it. Right. right you feel yeah, me? Yeah. So it was the same way for traveling. You know, you yeah. know what? Let me just figure out where I want to go because for us, we just, well, specifically for you know black people here, we say no, and then th that's it. Right. You know, if yeah. we don't plan, we don't do nothing. So you broke all bo you know borders, like and that was all yeah. the mental uh, borders. Because yeah. you do, in your book, you do bring up a point in regards to just uh, the Emmett Till effect, right? Yeah. You were talking yeah. about how yeah. just whether it was just the history of African Americans here in America haven't been great, and then they were brought here and was like, hey, this is your new home now. Mm -hmm. You're not going anywhere. Right. And I've heard many people say like. Black people specifically, like, yo, America's the greatest country in the world, right. but they haven't been anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere else. You know, it's, it's so funny because every time someone tells me that America's the greatest country in the world, I'm like, you haven't been anywhere. You don't mm -hmm. know where there are other, where greatness lies. Mm -hmm. um, you haven't experienced other nations. So, yes, America is an amazing place. Absolutely. It is an amazing place. All, the, all of the uh, liberties that we have access to here in America mm -hmm. And the things that, that are the different parts of the Constitution that protects our, 
you know, who we are, you know, and our rights, our liberties, you know, definitely gives us um, an advantage over other places. Mm -hmm. But there are other amazing places with amazing people, you know. So um, to that point, you're absolutely right. You got to get out there and travel to know where. And that's where I'm. And that's actually why I travel so much. I travel because I'm looking for that home. Mm. You know, I'm looking for that place that I I feel like I can settle in. Yeah. Mm. You know, do not um, do not feel like this is uh, home. No, nah, I don't. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, like I was born in Saudi. Mm-hmm. I lived here, but America. I'm grateful for all that it provides, yeah. but I don't necessarily feel home here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I can understand that. So you know. I'm kind of like on a quest to find that, I love you know, that place that I can call home, you know, that give me most of the liberties I'm looking for, the opportunity I'm looking for, and it'll allow me to build the vision that I have, inshallah. I like that. You know, so, you know, and that's kind of like the journey that I'm on. Every time I travel, I'm looking yeah. for different places for business and, and places I can eventually settle with my family. That's very difficult, though, because yeah. a lot of times your family members don't understand that. They're yeah. like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. This is where we're from. Right. This is where our people are from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How dare you say, like, right. this is not your home? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, it, but that's hard to translate because I understand right. where you're coming from. Yeah. That's very hard to yeah. get across. Right. But, you know, uh, you know, honestly, I think a, a major influence is you know, and now I'm just going through. Yeah, as yeah, you're talking about yeah. memories are getting jarred. Um, my father, he's always wanted to go back to Saudi and live in Saudi because he enjoyed Saudi. My family enjoyed Saudi. It was a very beautiful place to live in. Mm-hmm. Um, the luxuries that you're that you experience there, and just the Muslims, you know, and just that that being called and just the whole night he's really enjoyed it so maybe him he- hearing him all the time saying he wants to go back to Saudi <laughs> and, you know everybody kind of want to go back to Saudi yeah. you know um, everybody talk about that kind of like maybe influence it a little bit um, but I think my, my family is kind of on board you know gotcha. and I feel like maybe it's my task to um, accomplish it mm. we'll see <laughs> nice yeah, it's, you know just to go to your point because everybody's trying to fight to come to this country now yeah. and now with the Muslim ban, different restrictions. Mm-hmm. They're really trying to stop people from coming here, you know? Yeah. And there's people here now that are trying to leave. Right. So I just think it's really interesting because, you know, my family's from Egypt. This country is great. I wouldn't have majority of things I have in my life if it wasn't for this country. But mm-hmm. I like the balance. I like going back and right. forth because this country does teach you a lot about discipline, self preservation, and also you can, like, Anything's possible here. Yeah, yeah. Both good and bad. Yes, you feel yeah. me? <laughs> Anything's possible. Yeah. But in other countries, there legitimately is a ceiling. For example, in Saudi, mm-hmm. if you're not Saudi, you can't buy land. That's true. You can't own a business. Yeah. You can't be a politician. That's you true. You can't be a police officer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So there's very yeah, yeah. much limitations yeah, yeah. in that. And so. that's the same with a lot of other countries as well. They have that limitation where, especially in the Middle East, you're not allowed to do certain things unless you are, your blood is originating in that space. But you see, that's the case there, right? Yeah. But then here, when they try to implement that, we get upset. Why mm-hmm. do you think that's the case? I, I don't know this is a little bit of a politics yeah. question, but maybe you want to know. I'll, I, I don't have an answer right now. Okay. Um, Maybe as you travel, well, I think that defies people's expectations. Like, I didn't come here for this. Right, like, right. I yeah. left there yeah. because of right, that. Right, I didn't right, come right. here. Yeah. I didn't come here for this crap. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I, w- I would say that's a, that's a good that's a good response for um, you know it's supposed to be the land of the free and you have yeah. the opportunity yeah. to do everything that you could possibly do. Mm-hmm. Um, so our ex- expectation is, is is to have that access to everything. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you have human beings are human beings. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. And, you know, mm-hmm. and human thought is human thought. You know, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's our duty as human beings to protect the thought that's we, that the thoughts that we value. Mm. You know, um, so you know, yeah. I mean, I I, I can't go any deeper than that hey, on that one. It's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not a, a politician. Ball. Actually, I actually don't like politics. I try to mm. avoid politics. I'm one of the guys that you know, I try to stick front of scenes, behind the scenes, and and mm-hmm. and build things behind the scenes. And create opportunity because at the end of the day, it's the people behind the scenes that control. We, we were literally just talking about that today. Right? Talking about that we, too, we, so. we got another talk to have. <laughs> <laughs> we have another talk to have, my yeah, friend. Yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, so, so, your life and travel, it's like yeah. synonymous right now. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. you. Right. So, going into your first book, mm-hmm. Breaking Borders. Is primarily about the travel, yeah. But what is it that the reader gets out of it? Because and, and the reason I'm asking is because 
you have another book, yeah. My Kufi, that has a message that yeah. I've I've found was yeah. very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was I, a very different pointed message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I kinda yeah. wanted to try and like yeah. bridge the gap and see what the correlation between yeah. you and your books. Right. So let me let me I'll I'll bring you in. Uh Breaking Borders is my is my first title, right? I revised it once. I evolved my thoughts evolved and I revised it again. You know, I revised mm -hmm. it again. I'm actually going to revise it one more time because mm -hmm. my my thoughts have evolved even more, and I want to make the book more pointed, a mm -hmm. pointed conversation towards a specific thing. Um, the point that the the idea behind Breaking Borders is the shift of the thought process within the mind of young black men and men of color, so that they can look at life from a different perspective, mm -hmm. so that they're not they're not boxed into the life that they um, that they have been given. You know, a lot of people don't realize it, but black people have been given a certain life in America. Mm. We are expected to live a certain life in America, yeah. whether mm. we want to acknowledge that or not. Um, and the point of Breaking Borders is to, is to rattle those thoughts. Mm. Mm -hmm. To cause conflict with that ideology that we have some succumbed to and we've been forced to live within. Yeah. Um, that's the idea of Breaking Borders. Um, and I'm going to revise it one more time to really get that uh, point across because it started out as a travel guide. So there's travel mm -hmm, tips mm -hmm, inside mm -hmm. of there all yeah. throughout the book. It's sprinkled in there. But then there's a lot of like life and, and, and thought going around inside of the book. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revise it one more time. So, so what, then, what are some of the conflicts that you've hit with, I guess, African-American people mm -hmm. that are kind of adverse to traveling? Like what are, what are some of those things that maybe were inside of you or maybe just friends or whoever that were like, Nah, I'm good. Um, we don't have money. We just don't have the money and the resources to begin to travel. Mm -hmm. And then not only just the re not just the money, but the resources and the information and knowledge behind the importance of traveling. Yeah, because I find a lot of people that's like, nah, I'm good. Like, bro, what do I yeah. need to travel for? I'm right. good right here. Yeah. Like, but not only, but we gotta remember, bro, the reason why people travel anyways, like, oh, I'm gonna go to Florida. Why? I got family down there. Right. Or I'm going to Cali. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I'll go to countries like, oh, Pakistan. I'm a, I'm a boy, right. Mokong. Right. That's right. the reason. Yeah. So if you don't have those POCs, exactly. You don't have those. If you don't have those POCs to give those intel, you're not gonna do yeah. it. Yep. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah. Good point. how did Great you point. take that leap to go to a country where you know no nobody? And how do you pick the country that you want? Honestly, I pick a lot of my countries based off business. Okay. You know, based on where I'm going to do a tour to, mm. or I have an interest doing a tour, mm -hmm. or where I want to do future business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll go and explore a space, I'll make some contacts there, and I'll just develop relationships in those spaces and let those relationships develop um, so that when I'm ready to come back around, I got the bread, I'm ready to make some moves. And I'm yeah, like, all right, okay. let's make this move. But um, so that's why a lot of my travels, you know, are... Um, you know, geared around. So a lot of this tourism based, um, and just the the vision that I have to create what I'm what I'm seeking to create. Mashallah. Um so, you know, um like I'm going to Kenya and, and inshallah Ethiopia. Like that's the next, you know, uh like group of countries I wanna go to. Um one of the major reasons is because I wanna go to a black Africa, you know, um I've never been to Black Africa. I've been to Africa, but I've been to Morocco and in, 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 mm -hmm. in Cairo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's not Africa. That's the my, Middle East. What are you talking bad, about? Bro. They, put, they took all the black people and like, go south. Exactly. It's not Africa. That's the Middle East. You get what I'm saying? That, but that, but that's, the, that's the thought process that's the thought around process. you. It's like, no, it's Africa. <laughs> so what I say is, in, in, in people within my circle, we call it Arab Africa. Morocco Arab Africa. and Egypt and those countries are yeah, Arab Africa. North Africa, yeah. You know? Um, that's just Arab Africa. Is Africa, but it's where the Arab have Arabs have lived for so long, and they dominate the space in their mm -hmm. ideas and culture, and what people look up to and admire is is you know um, Arabs. Then you have other places, you know, it's like white Africa, and it's like you mm -hmm. know is specifically dominated and, and geared towards you know white people. And then you have other places, so, so like a South Africa, is, yeah, like a South okay. Africa. Um, I believe Namibia is one of those countries as well. Don't quote me. Really? No, don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Hey, yo, yeah. if y'all listening, you're from there. Google, Google yeah. him. Find his yeah, Instagram. Find that hour, yeah, so. it's, not, it's not all younger Muslim. It's all me. This is me talking. Um, but I had, but um, I, I had a conversation with someone who visit, who lived in Namibia for a very long time, and they they, they shared with me the the white influence that, mm, um, wow. you know, so like countries in like in those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you got, you have like countries like, like I mean, you, of course you have black Africans in those places all, all over, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but you have certain places that are just dominated by, you know, 
Africans, you know, black Africans. And so I want to go to one of those places that are dominated by black Africans and, and really connect with the culture there. Mm. So I'm going to Kenya. And then I also have other reasons why I'm going. So, you know, just for business and just my whole idea of explore, exploring and, you know, and uh, finding out and how to navigate those different spaces and make connections. So, mm. so yeah. So it looks like on your travel journey, you know, like you like Jabril was saying earlier, Saudi, and then here, and then going to the various countries that you talked about, it helped find your identity or maybe solidified, that yeah. may be the better word. Mm-hmm. And then you came around and we got my Kufi, yeah. right? And yeah. that is, when I read that book, I thought it was you. <laughs> like, I thought you were talking about you, yourself. You know, honestly, I was. Okay. I'm glad you got that yeah, from it. Was, it yeah. was Go ahead, continue. Was, yeah, so, because, <laughs> nice, nice, but nice. then, but then I, I went in and I saw a picture. I was like, hey, that looks like a dude. I think that's him. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the father, I was like, yeah, I think that's him. Yeah. But, Shout um, out to my illustrator. Right? Oh. And I was like, this is a book that he wrote to himself. You know, it this was. is a book that he wrote mm-hmm. to himself yeah. because that was a struggle that you had. You know, yeah. you want to be a proud Muslim, but yeah. you're like, how can I show that right. without making myself look like a fool. We're not supposed to do this on the air, bro. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Go Yo, ahead, bro. I'm not going to lie. My man read that book and was like, I see what you were doing. Yeah. Here. He right. read it. Yeah. But you're right. just like, because I was telling Jabril, I was like, growing up here, I didn't, I didn't wear a kufi because my dad never wore a kufi. But yeah. in Egypt, he wore a kufi all the time. Right. We're just, but in America, he's like, yo, look, we're, we're just going to be low key. Here. Yeah. You yeah. know, because come from a different country, like, you're not trying to attract too much attention. You're right. just trying to hustle and work and establish something for your family. Right. But now my father done them. Like, hey, father, you've done, the, you've done your job. You paved the way. Now it's my, my job to stand up and yeah. show, you know, that we represent the Islamic faith and that we're yeah. Muslim here and that we're proud, yeah. you know. And um, that's what I saw in the book. You had a bright red kufi on it. Yeah. And I loved it because, like, the kid was proud to wear yeah, it. He wasn't yeah. embarrassed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He, he didn't feel sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the dad didn't force him to. Yeah. And another thing that I liked was that, hey, you can get Kufi from all these different countries. Yeah. Show, show that there's more Muslims than just Saudi. Yeah. Southeast yeah. Asia. Yeah. West Africa. You have some countries in there that I never even heard of. Yeah. So yeah. it was a learning lesson for me as yeah. well. I'm 27 years old. Yeah. You know, learn <laughs> from a children's book. It was, good, <laughs> it was a good book, man. That's, That's, the, idea. Book. That's the idea. That's the idea. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. But you know, you, you know, um, the book was about me mm. because my dad was the complete opposite. You mm. know, he came back with a specific mission to teach Islam mm-hmm. in America. So he was going to show people what Islam looked like. Okay. Mm. So he walked around with a stove every day. You know, you know, and uh, he worked with a stove and his kufi, you know, mm. he was proud. Yeah. And my dad's a very proud man in terms of, you know, you know, he's not afraid to express who he is. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm growing up with him, you know, and him being in the forefront and showing it. Mm -hmm. um, It it was, was, I wouldn't say a lot of pressure, but it was a lot of pressure coming up as a Muslim, you know, inside of that type of household where we're the leaders of the kind of community in a way, because people are looking for, looking to us for the the guidance. So it was a lot of pressure in, in in that sense. So I was gradually led away from you know, my own identity within Islam. And then, of course, with 9-11, it's just a lot yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. Just a lot going on. Um, that families who, who, who took on that task to teach Islam went through, you know. And um, it was a lot of pressure. And, and, and just my own, even growing up and, and going through my process of getting older and then going out on my own and not having the protection of my parents and then hearing the things from other people. My parents were not there to shut them down. And I'm happy to <laughs> shut them down myself. You got that line in the book where he shuts the kids down, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not necessarily shut the kids down, but he stands up for he, he, he lets just, them know what's up. He, he, he lets them know, know like, oh, I'm Muslim. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. um, and this is why I wear my kufi. Uh, you know, that journey I had to go through on my own. Uh, but as time went on and all the other things that I went through, I slowly started taking my my Islamic ID and the things that represented Islam off for my own reasons and everything that was going on in life. I started taking my, you know, my kufi off. And then, you know, just this re- recently this year, when you asked, you know, how is everything connected? Mm-hmm. Um, it's all connected because I went on a trip to Morocco and I bought a cape. You know, oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> you see the cape and like you know, Lord of the Rings vibes. You yeah. know, some crazy. You know, bro, you don't even know, bro. I've seen <laughs> right? all the movies. <laughs> you know, and like you know, I fan. was super. You know how I am. I'm like, this cape is lit. I'm not gonna worry about what y'all got to say. I'm gonna right. wear my cape. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna shoot it for the gram. It's gonna, <laughs> yeah. and I'm gonna do what I gotta do with it. And uh, that's what I did. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, but what I didn't realize was that cape led to the inspiration of this book. 
mm-hmm. because I bought the cape in Morocco. Super excited about the cape. Mm-hmm. I came back. It was Eid. I went to go get an outfit for Eid, and I got this kufi and a thot. Mm. And um, it was like a complete outfit, and I was like, "Yo, this is lit," oh, we you know. Ain't, we ain't so, yo, exactly. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. And I was like super proud of this outfit. But then from there, I kept wearing my kufi, and got more got more comfortable with my kufi. And then one day, I was just like, "You know what? I think I'm gonna write a story about this." Mm. And you know, just using my talents, I just started writing a story, and and then. Throughout, throughout the journey of creating it, and then, you know, it just all just kind of came together. So, you know, the connection is I traveled, and I, and, I, and I got something in Morocco, and I didn't realize that that's what it was, mm. you know, and, <laughs> but that was my inspiration. Mm. And I didn't realize that this cape was going to produce a children's book that can potentially change, you know, a lot of young boys' lives and help them take pride in who they are, you know, and that's something I didn't realize. Yeah. Um, but who you know? You never know how your inspiration is going to come. Yeah, man. I mean, you know? I think after reading the book, because you asked me earlier, like what I thought of it, and, yeah. I, and I definitely think, as I said before, like I I see this book as one of those books where yeah. if I would have had it as a kid, yeah, I hated wearing. I did yeah. not like wearing yeah. hats, even still, like hats. Like you know, <laughs> his dad be really rocking it though. His pops, <laughs> oh, my pops, rocking yeah, it. my pops Shalom. always wore a kufi. Like, yeah, <laughs> always. Shout out to pops. Always, right? <laughs> but for me, it was like not wearing one was my way of uh. identifying. Different than my pops, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, your own identity, yeah, it was your my own identity, identity yeah, yeah. right? Like, I was yeah. like, Oh, I'm gonna wear the cat yeah. backwards, and right, ooh, right, 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 right. I'm gonna throw them off real quick. Yeah. So, so like, you know, for me, it was different, but I could still identify with it yeah. because it was all about trying to find yeah. your thing, yeah, yeah. so that you could identify. So, what I started yeah. doing was, I wear a necklace, uh, uh, I always wear okay. my law necklace, you okay. know what I'm saying? Okay, and so that's always nice. one thing that people would be like, Oh, like. I recognize that, yeah, or I yeah. have like the hoodies with, yeah. with halal on. Nice, so nice, like, nice, nice. There's the subtle ways, and and I took that. Yeah. It's not just about the kufi; it's yeah. about you being to be yeah, outwardly absolutely. Muslim and be proud yeah. and want that. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And you know what? And and that's where you know from this book. As I wrote this book, I, I, and I started to go through the publishing process, and I started getting the message out. I started to realize that it's bigger than this book. The the mm. it the book is just one of the steps or one of the pieces of part of the process. Um, but it's the it's the overall overall idea of identifying yourself with Islam in some ways, you know, shape or form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. however where you find it. Mm. You know, like for me, it start when when I stopped wearing a kufi and a thobe. You know, I make sure I wear my. I start wearing a, a guy the, Yem, the Yemeni the the, the the Yemeni way. You know, and I wrap it up the way the Yemenis do it. Mm-hmm. And um, you know that was mine. But then, then I, then I, then I, then I faced ostrac- You know, I was ostracized in that space. And wow. and as time went on, I started taking that off as well. And mm-hmm. I started growing out of it in a way. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, um, I found other ways. Make sure the pants is over above my ankle. I got a beard. You know, all the different things. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, um, but there was times that I found myself um, almost screaming the salams to Muslims at the top of my lungs. Um, Trying to get identified. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For them to, ac- yo, I'm Muslim. Acknowledge me. I'm but, Muslim. But do you feel like that really only happens with African Americans, though? I, I'm gonna tell. Let me. I'm gonna share it. And this, okay. this is where the whole why I brought it in this story because this is literally yeah. my journey. Um. After I started wearing my kufi, I'm walking inside of a park, and an outer brother says, "Assalamu alaikum" to me as proud as can be, and I look at him like, "What? <laughs> Did you just give me salams?" Yeah. Never had I gotten salams from me out at first, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, and I'll find myself trying to scream the salams to him, and he would not recognize me. Yep. But for some reason, he was like, "Salam alaikum," and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, is this what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> I like this. <laughs> it was like, I, 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 I like this. I like, I like that you give were, me my salam. Yeah, you gave me my salams. Like you gave me my right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but he, when with me identifying myself, I found myself on the other end of the table. Oh. You know, where, mm. um, whereas I found myself with other Muslims, where I would try to identify myself with them, and they would not recognize me because maybe they didn't hear me, whatever excuse they have, mm-hmm. um, they wouldn't give me the salams back. But then on the other side, here I am, identifying myself as a Muslim, and they're like, "Yo, salam alaikum." And then when I give salams to um, other, you know, other Muslims, they're proud to give me salams back. I'm yeah. like, "Oh, that's lit!" Like, okay, now <laughs> now there's like a, there, there's this thing happening here, mm-hmm. um, and there's this exchange, this even exchange happening that it really made me feel proud. So yeah. as I wrote this book, you know, 
and, uh, and you'll see the transformation inside of the book from the beginning of the book, um, the Jaysha character is not getting identified by a Muslim, but at the end of the book, when he identifies as a Muslim, you know, he, he, he has that thing that represents him, that can be openly, repre uh, represent, openly identify him, you know, he's identified, and he's like, oh, wow, this mm -hmm. is amazing. So that's the same thing that I went through. You know, yeah. it's like, yo, this is crazy. Um, wow. It was a struggle. You know, and it's, it's just the overall push that I'm trying to get, you know, and, I, and, and when I said there's a bigger, you know, thing that's happening beyond the book, um, and I feel like I've been blessed with um, just pushing the idea that it's important that Muslim men start to identify themselves in some way or another. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever your journey is, start to begin that process to coming closer to being identified as Muslim. Because that's what I'm going to say. Muslim women don't have that choice. It, and that's, that's what the point that I was going to go into. Because yeah. you mentioned a full journey. It wasn't like, yeah. I want, I'm not going to do it. Now I am. It showed right. the struggle. Right. You know what I mean? It showed jihad, showed the struggle of Sabila Lai, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because men... We get upset, you know, at women like you guys just keep going in there. You keep right, on, man. Yeah. Well, you take it off one day, you're on one day. But yeah. same thing happened to you. Yeah, you but, feel me? But and, and not only that, this is what I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. Women are struggling with taking it on and off, yeah. but then Muslim men don't have don't have to go through that struggle. I was just about, exactly. when I so said who exactly. are we to judge that? because yes. like we because we are not mouth. required to identify ourselves in Islam. We're not required to wear a dress, some form of dress that identifies you with Islam. We get the high, mm. you know, and then we sit there and be judgmental of Muslim women mm -hmm. who they come out the bushes like you get what I'm saying, like oh you go dunk, you got your yeah, yo this is a tripping, yeah. <laughs> yo, she out here showing everything, mm. but bro, did you are you identifying with Islam? Mm -hmm. So I started this whole movement, like what do you have on yours? Coming from born mm. from the lion side of the, one of the lines in the book, you know, Jaysha's mother says to him, what do you have on yours? How does she know that you're a Muslim? Mm. Mm. You know, and, and that's my challenge to all the Muslim brothers. Wherever hey. you are on your journey, what do you have on yours? Whether it's a necklace that people can you know, identify, or is it a kufi? Is it a izar? Is it a thobe? Or is it something that connects you somehow to Islam that people can recognize? Muslim, other Muslims can recognize and identify, and then, inshallah, you continue your journey to get closer to Allah and continue, not saying that being identified with Islam doesn't make you closer to, Islam, uh, to Allah, mm -hmm. but, you know, you know, you can get closer to, you know, the whole entire movement because our sisters are alone out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they are, they are, Great point. They are, they are on the front lines alone, yep. you know, with representing Islam, um, and they're catching a lot of the backlash you know, attacked, being ostracized, yep. um, uh, 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 vocally being abused, bullied, uh, bullied, uh, actually getting physically, actually getting murdered um, mm -hmm. because they are identifying themselves as Muslims and Muslim men are not. Yeah, yeah. Muslim men get to hide behind the idea that we're not required to dress a certain way and we get to be protected from mm -hmm. behind that concept. And I'm going to go as far as to say that um, even Sikhs are being attacked because mm. they, because the extremists think that um, the Sikhs are Muslim. Mm -hmm. So they're attacking the Sikhs. And, and, and I believe there was a, 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 a Sikh man that was killed because he had his, his turban on, rocking his turban. Mm -hmm. And the guy who attacked him thought he was Muslim. I can't believe that. You know? Wow. And uh, and kill and basically you know beat him or whatever he did to him and so this guy is dying for our cause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This man died for our cause and we are behind sitting behind saying oh we not we not required to, you know. So my challenge is it's a bit of a challenge it's a bit of a ruffle for a lot of our Muslim brothers but I and I encourage our Muslim brothers to you know just you know you know start to move closer to you know identifying yourselves and join your sisters in this entire process of representing Islam because our sisters are tired, yo. You, you know, but you know what's funny? What's funny about yeah. what you just said, bro, yeah. and it's, it just hit me so hard. Yeah. I think that goes even deeper than just the dress. It also goes into the work that yeah. we do because mm -hmm. yeah. if you look at this platform, mm -hmm. right, when you look at mm -hmm. social media yeah. and people that are doing work out here, yeah. it's all women. Yeah. There's yeah. not really a lot of us yeah. men. No. And yeah. so it, we have to put ourselves, like, one of the biggest things when we first started this was his mom was like, I don't want you to be taken. Because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, bro. It, real life. It, it was real. Like, but she was real. She was like, yeah. listen, like, you guys are saying some things. You're talking yeah. about Islam. Yeah. And it's going on the internet. Like, this is real. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. And then we realized, like, yo, there really are no Muslim men 
who are, look like us yeah. that are out here doing this. On the this. front lines. Out the there, front lines. You know, out there representing and being who we're supposed to be. Exactly. You exactly. know, being Muslim and being great does not mean extremist. Exactly. 100%. There are Muslims who have come before us who led the world into the most amazing, phenomenal time the world was inside of because they just simply, you know, tapped into their own religion. Yeah. <laughs> they tapped into the, to the teachings of their, of their deen. And, and led the world into the direction that we are in today. If it was not for the Muslims during that time period, we would not be where we are today. Absolutely. You know? But that was because they tapped into who they are and they tapped into their greatness and they tapped into the, to the uh, lessons and the, the guidance that Allah sent them. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, you know, we just got to tap into that. Yeah. You know? yeah. We got to tap into it. What if, how can somebody internalize my Kofi? What, what if I'm not ready? Yeah. You know, what if I'm not ready, whether I'm, you know, men, women, boys, girls, whatever. What if we're not ready? How can we build up internally? Because right now, there's a lot of people that are outwardly Muslim, you yeah, know, wearing yeah. the thobe, kufi. Yeah. But when they go home, they treat their parents horribly. Yeah, yeah. They don't spend any time with their wife. Yeah. You know, they don't give their kids attention that they yeah, need. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. So I think outwardly, more people are being Muslim in a way, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. internally, right? like you said, we're very distraught Mm -hmm. you feel me and we're off balance so how can somebody internalize my kufi from the inside and let it shine the outside one thing i would say is and i had a conversation earlier um where when i started my journey to wear the kufi i found myself being stopped from doing certain things Mm -hmm. because i realized that my kufi represented islam Mm -hmm. (laughs) it directly connected me to islam so the things that I was I was doing, or I may mean, felt comfortable doing that I shouldn't have I shouldn't have felt comfortable doing. Now representing Islam, I had to shift the way I thought. Mm. You know, I like that. So that's mm. one way that it can help from the in, from the internal perspective. Um, and then if you're you're seeking with the right intention to be to be identified with Islam and to represent Islam, then you should also look for other ways to. To clean the inside, you know, because the kufi mm-hmm. is just a part. It's a part of it. A mm-hmm. thobe is a, a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, how many brothers wear thobes all the time, but they do all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. stuff. How many brothers mm-hmm. wear like, beards and kufis and everything, yeah, yeah. or women who do? Mm-hmm. You know, it it, it 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 happens all the time. But um, there's an internal journey that you have to go on. You know, so my thing, my encouragement is, you know, if you if you're going on this path to to take pride in your identity in Islam, then you must have some affinity to the idea of Islam that you want to represent it outwardly, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. So if you, take, if, you, if you think about that, that you, that you have this desire to, to outwardly represent it, how can you inwardly represent it? How can you make yourself the best version of you as Islam recommends and in, 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 um, recommends that you do, um, you know, Go ahead and, and do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So that, that's how I would, that's, that's what I would say. Just, it, it starts mm-hmm. with just, it, I honestly think it starts with the identity, mm-hmm. you know? It starts with the, the idea, the outward identity, and, and if you stand true to it, if you stand true to it, um, you'll, you know, truly stand true to it. You know, the inward will start to, start to do what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I love that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I would say. Because, you know, when you look at stories like the story of Omar, you know, um, Omar was a very, you know, uh, aggressive, mm-hmm. um, an outward person, you know. But he was like, yo, if I'm going to believe in this, I'm going to go show the world I believe in it. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's great. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's yo, how that's Islam yeah. got into the forefront. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He did. You know, yeah. and that was one of the major uh, uh, inspirations behind when I was starting to write this book. Yeah. I was like, yo, Omar, when Omar started, when Omar, Omar became Muslim, he said, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be praying inside this house with y'all. Mm-hmm. If y'all, we going to pray, we'll go pray at the Kaaba. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. good. And he took them to the Kaaba and he was like, y'all want to go? And I think he actually spent the day fighting everybody too. <laughs> you know, so Man. like, you know, it, you know, like he was like, I'm not going to sit here and just hide it on the inside. Mm. You know, I'm gonna go out here and show y'all. So I'm not saying go fight nobody. That's, That's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying go fight nobody. I'm not saying this is this is a this is a this is a, this is a fight. You know, hey, look, go. man, this is a family podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family this podcast. Is for kids. <laughs> this is a children's book. <laughs> but y'all know. But um, <laughs> this is behind the scenes of my you know, kufi. Like, but you know, you're 
you're, you're, you, you should be proud of who you are. Absolutely. And especially Absolutely. if you're living inside of a country like America that gives, that gives you the liberties and the protections to be who you are. Absolutely, yep. You should take advantage of it. You should it. take advantage Why of not? it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you live in a country where you go to jail if you wear your kufi, then or you, wear, you, you go to jail if you wear a hijab, I understand. If, mm -hmm. if you're not willing to go to jail for Islam, Islam gives you that protection. Go ahead and take it off. Protect yourself. But when you are in a space where you know, all you're going to get is a, a nasty look or maybe somebody every once in a while, but then every, every, every once in a while you get some extremists that might actually go physical, Yeah. you know, you take it. advantage of your of your liberty. But it, it's like it's like Nipsey right. said um, in one of his interviews. He was like, "Man, you gotta be willing to die for what you believe." Oh, that's in. a fact. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. be willing. Like at the end of the day, like if someone is willing, it hates what we do so much. Yeah, but I love what we yeah. do so much. So they yeah. want to take my life for it. Then right. so be it. Yeah, like I, um, that, that's a very good point, man. And um, um, I always approach everything with that mentality. Yeah. Not saying I'm trying to go out here and die. No, no, no. Absolutely. You absolutely. got to make a disclaimer get, because. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do not roll up on me like that. <laughs> exactly. Make bro, sure like, you oh, have, for real, bro? You'll have, you'll have, you'll have, <laughs> no, you can have agents at your door and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Facts. No, and I hear what you're saying. I, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, yeah. But I'm saying I because I lived through that. Yeah. My dad, my dad had agents. We have agents visit us all the time. Yeah. Legitimate federal agents come visit our family all the time. Mm -hmm. My dad was like, "We just still teaching Islam out here." <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So it's a real thing. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, you know, the grand master of our system, um, he was like, uh, you know, you got we train to be able to protect what we believe in. Yeah. You know, yeah. we train to be able to protect what we believe in and protect our 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 values. You mm -hmm. know, because that's what it means to be in America. You know. What is the purpose of the Constitution? Exactly. You know, the purpose of the Constitution is just that to be able to protect and and and, and the things that you believe, the things that you hold dear to you, and and as long as it does not conflict with other people, mm -hmm. you know, identifying yourself as a Muslim does not conflict with other people. No, no, it does all. not hurt anybody. No, me being the very best Muslim that I can be, and me wearing, I showing myself, showing myself as that, and then me be, being the best scientist, doctor, you know. Uh, Technician or whatever work that you do is not going to affect anybody, and that's where I found myself even going into, um, even going to my workspace with my kufi on, mm. and that was that was a bit of a challenge for me because I was like, how are they going to receive me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. And then I found myself actually wearing my kufi on court while I'm teaching. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And kids asking me, "Oh, Coach Dill, why are you, Co Coach, why are you wearing that thing on your head?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "It's my kufi." You know, and I wear it because Here's my book fits <laughs> Basically, right? But, Cash out PayPal, you know, Snapchat. <laughs> literally, literally. Uh, but I found myself doing that, you know, and then I even found myself even crazier, right? Last week, um, a friend of mine reaches out to me out of the blue and say, "Hey, would you be willing to come um, uh, be a model for my shoot? Mm. I'm trying to shoot for something, and I need a model." And I'm like. Sure, why not? I'm going through the process. I'm producing content. I need help. Mm -hmm. I get the idea, so I'm gonna help. I'm not. I'm doing something, but I'm not really doing something. I'm gonna come help. So when I got, when I, I, I mentioned to my wife, I'm like, um, I'm like, uh, you know, I might have to take my kufi off for this shot. And she was like, mm, you're gonna take your kufi off? Yeah. And I was like, oh. she was like, Muslim women don't have that choice to take their kufi off when they go to work. Yo. And I was like. Oh. Hey. I said, you right, though. Right? Hey. So when I got there. That's a righteous one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got there, right? She a real one. The girl was <laughs> like, um, nah, you don't got to take a kufi off. It's cool. You don't have to compromise. And so here I am. I'm sitting here willing to comp compromise mm. so it can fit her work. But she's like, nah, it actually adds a little Look flavor to it. Go different. ahead. It's, hey. different. it's different. Go yeah. ahead. You good. I was like, yo. <laughs> I'm with it. Okay. <laughs> but... You know, so the thing about it is, even if you are going to face, you know, different scrutiny and different things like that in your workspace, you know, be willing to go ahead and, and challenge that that idea because a lot of times it's just in our mind. You know, it's, you know, it's a crazy because a lot of people say, you know, stand for something or fall for anything, right? right? right. But it's also one of those things where it's like um, a lot of scientists or philosophers say, hey, you know, if you go out there and you put it out there, you manifest it, the universe will bow down towards right, you. Right, and then it, right. the way I think about it was that there's one chick, I'm not going to, uh, we're going to try to get on the podcast. She's on TikTok. She's okay. huge on TikTok. 
I don't know if you know about that social media app. I, I'm discovering it. Okay. It's, it's, it's for the youth. I'm still old. Take your time, so, bro. Take your time. So, so right now, it's like, you know, she's wearing the hijab. She has like millions and millions of views. They sent her a TikTok brand hijab. Obviously, oh, wow. Kima, it's, wow. Yeah, so wow. obviously, it's That's a brand amazing. thing. Yeah. But it's like, she stood for something. Yeah. And yeah. guess what? The universe was like, here. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? And now, Allah was like, that's yeah. what Nike's doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what yeah. Nike's yeah. doing. That's what Diddy's doing. All right, cool. We see what y'all. Yeah. We gonna give yeah. y'all what y'all yeah. need. Because yeah. we know that y'all are mm. standing up for something. Right. And y'all not hiding. Y'all not yeah. going anywhere anytime soon. You right. feel yeah. me? Yeah. So We go, we either going to get down or we going, or we going to lose. Yeah. yeah. You Absolutely. know, because for the brands, they don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. They have they have to succumb to what we do. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are the people. And we're the people who are going to purchase from them. And then companies at the same time. Companies, you got to be careful. Companies have to be careful with you know discriminating because that becomes a discrimination lawsuit yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true but, you know? but what's <laughs> also important is that's the beauty of the, the, the liberties that we have in yeah, our country exactly. that's but, true. but it goes back to what I was saying before where it's a lot deeper than just the appearance because yeah. now you find these women that yeah. have to go and work in these brands because these brands need us yeah. in yeah. their businesses yeah. get them bro yeah. They, yeah. They, that's, they a tr- that's they a truth they don't actually know how to brand towards right. Right. the Muslim women right. they don't know right. how to right. they don't even know how to properly route the yeah. Kimar yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. you have to start bringing these these women on board who have a say who have a voice and so now yeah. It's funny because they try to suppress Islam so much yeah. in the media and everywhere else. But guess what? It's going more mainstream than it ever has. Yeah, it's crazy. Ever. Yeah, it, because oh, yeah. It, they have no choice. Because now, yeah. now they're starting to influence the money. Yeah, they're yeah. realizing mm-hmm. that we yeah. have purchasing power. Yeah, that we have that. That's a. That's we have a, influence. We have more influence around the world than ever right. before. That is a fact. So guess what? They're going to put that Muslim sister yeah. in the in yeah. the upper echelons yeah. of a big business. And this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying I'm trying to push the idea of also our Muslim brothers being to represent Absolutely. themselves at the top. Mm. Absolutely. You know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you how how many CEOs and amazing people we have inside of organizations that don't represent Islam, man. They go home, they go to the masjid, and they're masjid. They they the best Muslim. Yeah. But when they go to the work there, no one knows that they're Muslim. No. Yeah. <laughs> you get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you know along with this the diversity and inclusion of the Muslim woman, the Muslim woman is the isn't the only face of the representation mm-hmm. of Islam. Get, get them, one hundred percent. You have the Muslim man as well, and even more, and even more so, I say, for us, it's important that we um, that we step up yeah. and be a part of that journey as well, because our sisters are alone, mm-hmm. and how we, how the sisters gonna know they got husbands out here? Ooh. Oh, say it, say it how again. How do sisters know they got husbands out here? Where the husbands at? Oh, they ain't at home taking care of the kids. They're cool then. But you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, what, what, what I'm you, saying is, you. the single sisters that are out here, uh-huh. right? And you got weak brothers that, that, I'm not saying that everybody's weak for not identifying as Muslims, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, you got weak brothers that are afraid to really show their, show their Islam, mm-hmm. that are qualified individuals, but not necessarily qualified individuals. How do we know that you exist? Yeah, true. Good we point. need we need, we need need husbands. We need my kufi. We, uh, yo, facts. But we we need we need young brothers to take that take a uh, step up and, and be a part of that journey because, you know, if more brothers identify themselves and sisters like, oh, he's a good brother, but if you walk yeah. by her and she don't know you Muslim, she's not gonna ever acknowledge you. She mm-hmm. ain't gonna send that with kill for you, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, if you all looking for y'all looking for us, you know me looking for y'all looking for uh, wives, you gotta. You gotta show that you a husband. Yeah. <laughs> so Adil said, if you're single and you need a wife, you need to get this book ASAP. Yeah. That, 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 that's what I got. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm <laughs> tell you like this, honestly, and I'm and I'm not just saying this, but I had a young brother that um that a good friend of mine, he read it he, and he was taken by because he's an adult. He read it. He was like, yo, I didn't, I never thought about it like this. Yeah. Mm. You know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. even even though it's a children's book and it was written for children with children's language and ideas for children. An adult can find their own purpose through it. Mm-hmm. So if you buy that book for your your son, your your nephew, mm. your grandson, you know that that family member or that friend, yeah. read it first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot <laughs> of enjoy it. You will enjoy it. <laughs> Look, if people are getting upset. Like, oh yeah, uh, the youth are lost. Well, if that's the case. Yeah. These are the type of texts they need to be reading. Yes. Stop giving them the cat in the hat and green yeah. eggs and ham. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that's, that's a fact. Like, you're right, but I mean, that's my that's my foundation. <laughs> but, right. but, that, but you know what? That's the problem, though. Yeah. You yeah. know why? Because why? more people like myself and people who have these ideas in our mind. Mm-hmm. Need to create content for us because we are geniuses. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're the we've best of them. Blessed with genius. 
and we can create work that's better than my than cat in the hat, green eggs and ham, one Dr. fish, two uh, fish, yeah, all those. We can create works that's better than that that have a greater influence and in, 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 in meaning. Any of that. That's ex- mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. we've been blessed with the best knowledge. We've been we've been we've been told that we are the best of creation. I love so that. if we are the best of creation, how can we? How can we think that we are not going to be able to create content yeah. that's better than the Dr. Seuss and the cat in the hat and everything It's our like time, that. bro. You it's our time. I may not be the one that does it, but there's someone out there that's a super genius that's going to create some work that's going to go crazy out there, and it's going to change the way we think as Muslims. And our young Muslim people are going to be able to to um, to benefit by that content and be able to see themselves in this the content they consume. Mm. Uh, I mean, so, yeah, so how can good. people get... My Kufi, my friend. How can people um, get this amazing book? Yeah, right here? My Kufi. You can get it at mykufi.com. It's very simple. Mykufi.com. Okay. Um, my <laughs> Kufi, <laughs> K U F I. <laughs> Dot com. Very simple. Or you can go on Amazon. So wherever you are inside the world, you nice. can go on Amazon and purchase it. Um, I would recommend that you go through my Kufi because it's a little cheaper on my Kufi.com. Mm-hmm. And you'll get a signed copy from me. But if you don't care about a signed copy from me, you can purchase it on Amazon. Um, but if you if you are in a space that um, a country that um, you cannot find it, shoot me a message, an email, DM, and ask me to you know um, make your country available. And how can people what find you? Yes, uh, they can find me at um, Adil underscore Ismail. Or my coffee. Um, my spell that out. Um, I know the last yeah, name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's spelled it's a little bit different. So, spell it out. So we got um, it's is I S M A A E E L. Um, so as I did A D I L mm-hmm. and underscore I S M A A E E L. So it's double A double E, and that's you'll be able to find me there. The link is in my bio. You can follow my journey because there's more. There's more coming along with my Kufi and the whole idea, the push. You know, the what do you have on yours of uh, campaign that we're you know we're we're looking to move forward. Um, to support the support the whole entire path. You want to get inspired through travel. You want to get inspired hey. through the whole entire idea. Mm-hmm, Just mm-hmm. come join it. Come join the community in a way. You know, absolutely. Um, keep getting this inspiration. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. And make sure you guys go and support. And if you guys. Are listening and you guys do support brother Adam make sure you send him a DM and let him know that you came from the podcast oh, yeah, we're not getting any do. kickback or anything yeah, but we yeah, want to yeah, show yeah. him how yeah. strong and how deep our young Muslim yeah, family yeah, is and we're going to support yeah. any cause that helps I appreciate grow that, us yeah, yeah, yeah please do if you do purchase a book and it comes through yeah, younger Muslim yeah please let me know absolutely yeah. 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 bro we appreciate what you're doing here we appreciate Mashallah. your work we appreciate what you represent my well, man I'm grabbing a few today yeah yeah like we definitely have children in our lives that we know this is going to affect yeah. so it's, it's great to see someone who's like us not yeah. just a black brother but a young Muslim yeah. who's not just talking about putting in work but actually putting out work right. that can right. change yeah. lives yeah. that can really impact yeah the culture, my friend. But that's what young and Muslim. That's what you. That's what you do as a young, young and Muslim. Exactly. As a young Muslim person, you're supposed to put work out that is going to impact, you know, the culture. It's, it's going to benefit us. Absolutely. You know, if you're young and you Muslim and you're not putting out work, what you doing? Hey. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, bro, you know, we appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by with it's us. A pleasure, bro. You already know, fam. Yeah. It's a pleasure, bro. Get some that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you already know. So, uh, if this is your first time listening, or you've been a long time listener, you know where to find us. But if not. You can uh, find us and listen to us on SoundCloud, um, I believe Stitcher Radio, CastBox, Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, CastBox. I said that twice. <laughs> the Young and Muslim <laughs> Podcast. Please support us. Yeah. Um, please subscribe also on YouTube, The Young and Muslim Podcast. And Jabril, if they want to send us a direct message, where can they find us on social? Oh, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Young, Y-U-N-G, the letter N, Muslim, Young and Muslim Get at us, shoot us a DM, tell us how much you love this interview, mm-hmm. and make sure you guys go and follow our man, Adil. Yes. yes. I appreciate y'all lending your platform to me and making it available to me, brothers. 100%. Yes. 100%. Is, uh, Welcome to the fam. Yeah, hey. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody listening uh, to the journey. Hey, you know, absolutely. I reward all of y'all. And bless y'all. Any last words? Um, be the best version of you that you can be. Be the very, very best version of you that you can be. Mama mentality. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever that is. If it's picking up rocks, picking up trash, if it's cleaning floors, if it's creating the next, you know, app that changes the world. Whatever it is, just be the best you can, that you can be, and you know, you'll see the reward come from it. Right. Let's yes, get a baby.
Let's All wrap right. this thing up, baby. So for the last hour and nine minutes, you have been listening to the Young and Muslim Podcast. I'm Jabril Salam. And I'm Muhammad Hassan. And this is Adil Ismail. And we greet you with the greens of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Peace. Broke on the back. <laughs> <laughs>